Okay, um, so thanks for coming, guys. Um, this is Next Gen AV versus my shitty code, and in true dev fashion, I did steal all the code from Stack Overflow and various blog posts. Um, so the, the Who Am I slide before we get started. My name's James. I'm a, a pen tester with Sakama. I'm also a recovering .NET developer. Uh, I spent about 10 years of my life doing that um, before moving into InfoSec. And I'm losing the back of the battery cover off the slide thing. That's fine. Um, so the motivation behind this, I've realized I've not put a slide in that actually tells you what I'm going to do, but that will become clear in a minute. Um, so I really like shells, as do most pen testers, right? Um, AV stops my shells, and running things to modify payloads on the fly kind of sucks. Like having to encode payloads is, is just a bit of pain that we could do without. Um, so before I run the demo, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. Um, so I've, I've built a bit of like bit of tooling that is going to bypass a couple of AV products. Um, I'm going to show you two examples of next gen offerings, and this allows you to run basically your own code and, and bypass AV without any sort of encoding. So I'm going to fire up the videos. Um, I'm, I'm not doing this live because live demos are just terrible. Um, oh, two screens, come on. All right. So this first one, oh, mouse. So this is McAfee endpoint um, with adaptive threat protection. So this is the McAfee sort of next gen offering, if you like. Um, so I'm, I'm running update just so you can see it's the latest virus definitions. Um, I've not shown it, but this is the latest Windows 10, fully patched. Um, Defender's still running if you're, if you're interested in that. So up here, this is the command prompt. Um, I'll explain what these are doing in a minute, but essentially this is my code um, loading Meterpa into memory um, with McAfee running, and we get the Meterpa session at the end. Um, and then, yeah, I'll just pull out host name and confirm that I'm not doing any trickery for the video, but it is a, a shell against, uh, against Windows with McAfee. Um, so that, that's McAfee, right? I mean, this... It, it's, um, it, it's a reasonably good product from what, I, what I've seen of it. Um, Oh, come on. Excellent. Right, find my mouse pointer. Yeah. So the next one, this is Silence. Um, so this is like proper next-gen AV, right? Um, this, is, this is pitched as a next-gen AV product. Um, ignore this inspecting. All this is doing is like the, the first initial scan when you install it. This was installed like 10 minutes before I ran the demo video. It is doing background threat, de threat detection. Um, slightly different setup, so the payload builder is on the terminal session on the on the left hand side. This is just RDP into the Windows machine. Um, Silence kills VirtualBox, which I didn't know at the time. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. I've generated the, the payload over here. Um, we're passing the, this is a, an AES key, which I'll explain in a minute. This is the payload server, and we're, we're running the same, the same command. Um, and then I'll start up the Metasploit listener. And run that again. And there we go. We have a, a meterpreter session open. Um, so if you try and run meterpreter direct on this host, it won't even touch the host. It gets binned before it, you can even fetch it to run it. Um, so both AV products do that. Um, Windows Defender does that out of the box. Um, so yeah, that, that's silence getting bypassed. So, let's kill the video. Right, back in the slides. So what just happened? So the stage, which I'm calling update service.exe, just for a bit of opsec, right? Uh, fetched an AES encrypted payload, built it in memory using Roslyn, then executed it using reflection. The payload contained Meterpet shellcode, which is injected into memory, and before it did all that, it checked it wasn't in a sandbox. Um, so we have a paint diagram of the same thing, just if that's a bit difficult. So the payload server over here, that is in this demo, just Python simple server, um, this, this is the victim machine, the Windows 10 machine, so it pulls the payload server, it fetches the encrypted payload over the network, it base64 decodes it, then it decrypts it, then it builds it using Roslyn, which I'll show you a code snippet of in a minute, uh, then it uses reflection to execute it in memory, and then we do the shellcode inject um, using kernel32, and then the Metasploit staging happens, the, the usual sort of back and forth to fetch the, the stage and Metasploit, and we end up with shells on the attacker machine. In the videos, these are both the same server, but they don't need to be. You can fetch payloads from anywhere and launch your shells anywhere you like. Um, so that's the, the overview of it. So the real basics of this, it's written in C Sharp, because um, that's what I know. As I say, I did about 10 years of that before sort of moving into InfoSec. Uh, encrypted payloads fetched over the network. The payload never touches disk. Um, the stage obviously has to touch disk, but the payload itself is completely memory resident, as is everything else it does. So we're using C Sharp to build C Sharp. Um, the, the second video, I've called this tool inception for that reason, um, but you, you get the meme that you get in every InfoSec talk, right? 
So this is how it's done. It's using Roslyn. Um, so this code variable here, this is the decrypted code that we fetched over the network. Um, so up here, the AES encryption happens and the sandbox checks and stuff. If any of those fail, we just exit, return nothing, and nothing else happens. Um, so this is just the C-sharp way of generating this. So this is part of the Roslyn syntax. And then we call build on it down here, which is all this stuff. And then we build a new memory stream. For those of you who don't know .NET, that is just a, a byte array in memory, essentially. And emit the result of the build operation into memory. So we execute using reflection. Um, up here is a build check. So if it fails, again, we do nothing in exit. If the build succeeds, we then use reflection. Um, so these two values are important. So the assembly type, uh, TCP, interpret process program. That needs to be match what you fetch in the payload. Um, these are static in, in the stage, um, and the, the name of the method you call is static as well. But apart from that, I'm using Metasploit just because it's a, a really nice way of showing that we've actually done some, some sort of bypassing. But you can run basically any C-sharp code you want um, using, using this method. So this, um, you probably all know about this, it, it blows it in memory, it runs it in memory. Um, so sandbox detection is done using check please. I think that was released at SteelCon last year, um, but the, the GitHub link is there anyway. For now, it's simple checks, purely because this is still in development. Um, so we're looking for the, min the minimum number of USB drives and the minimum number of browsers installed, because nobody's ever used Windows 10 with just Edge. Like, nobody does that. Um, <laughs> There are other things you can do. So you can check if you're on a domain joined host. You can tie it to a domain name. So if you're deploying this on a red team gig, you can make sure it's only executed on the domain that's in scope for the engagement and stuff like that. That's really simple to do. You just grab extra code from check please and, and add it into the program. So the payload, I'm not going to show you this, but Google how to run Meterpreter with shellcode, like shellcode in C sharp, and you will find the same blog post that I found when I stole this. Um, it, it uses kernel 32, it like takes the shellcode that comes straight out of MSF Venom with a bit of encoding, um, injects it into memory, and that's it. Um, so almost any C sharp code can be used. Um, I think there are a couple of restrictions around fetching packages from NuGet. Um, I've not had a chance to look into it properly, but Essentially, if you can build it in C-sharp, you can run it using this tool. Um, so I think FireEye did something on a blog reasonably recently called Bring Your Own Land. I'm pretty sure that was FireEye. So they were doing something similar using Cobalt Strike and pre-compiled .NET binaries, and they, they fetch the binary and just load it through the Cobalt Strike beacon. Similar principle. Um, they were building sort of off-site, and they weren't really aiming to bypass AV. The, the whole point of this is you don't need to mess around with AV, like it just works. Um, but yeah, similar concept, so I'm, I'm building it in memory. So this is an early version of the payload builder without the ASCII art. Uh, sorry, I didn't get a chance to update the, the screenshot with the cool ASCII art. Um, but you can kind of see what it's doing. So you pass it the usual host L port. Um, template is a, a text file that is the payload in unencrypted text, and it has a tag in it that says put shellcode here. So it calls out to uh, MSF Venom um, using reverse HTTPS payload, which is here. It does a few rounds of encoding, just because I can. Um, then it, so it, it dumps the generated shellcode into the template file and writes that to disk as unencrypted so you can see what you're doing. It then generates a random AES key, encrypts the, uh, the modified template, um, dumps it into slash temp so you can serve it with Python server for now, and then you get the, the AES key at the bottom. So these keys are unique, they're generated per run of this. So in theory, you can run this once and deploy it multiple times, or you can run it like once and run it one, like use it once and then throw it away. Um, yeah, so this is, this is that in words. So you generate the shellcode, you put it in a template file, you encrypt it, and then I'm sticking it in slash temp just because it, it's really easy to use slash temp. So work so far, um, we've got the one template. Uh, this does only work with 32-bit meterpreter. I'm fairly sure I know why. Um, so the interesting thing with .NET, if you try and debug unmanaged code in .NET, it, it just doesn't give you any debug output. It says an error occurred. Um, like Visual Studio is not meant to handle unmanaged code, right? It's, it's just what it is. Um, I'm fairly sure I know why that doesn't work. But yeah, for now, it works with 32-bit. Payload generation is done. I mean, that, that's reasonably simple Python script. Uh, I think it's in the same blog post that I stole the template from. Um, and the, the, the stage itself is, is basically finished. That's, it's stable. It's been used in the wild on one of our, one of our red team gigs. Um, it, it works. There's a couple of bits to do around extra sandbox checks, but yeah, it, it works out of the box. So we do have a big problem with this. Um, so, I don't know if you guys know C-sharp, but when you build an app in C-sharp, you get a load of DLLs out of it. 
um, which you have to copy up to the victim in this case. Uh, I don't want to be copying like 30 odd DLL files up. So to solve that, I'm using a tool called Fodi, which takes all the DLLs and stuffs them into one exe. Um, the only, you get one file out of it, right, which is brilliant, it's one file to upload, but it's big. Um, so you're talking almost 10 meg, which, I mean, it, it's still usable, but it, it could be better in that regard. Um, so successes, yeah, silence and full protection, that, that's quite cool. McAfee endpoint protection with adaptive threat protection. Um, Windows Defender, like obviously I, I've not turned that off for any of these demos. I'm fairly sure this will get around most of the sort of end user space AV offerings. Um, I can't think of any reason why like somebody like that isn't Silence wouldn't wouldn't pick this up. Um, so further work, yeah, make it work 64 bit. Um, I don't think that's far away. More templates, so more templates equals more payloads. Uh, we can then start doing cool stuff with it. I want to modify that Python script once we've done that to let you sort of pick and choose templates and payloads and have it so you can load arbitrary shell code or pick from sort of a library of exploits. Um, the payload server, so this is something that could be really cool um, at the minute. So if Blue Team's doing sort of monitoring of command lines and stuff like that, in theory they can get the, the command that was passed to that app out and the AES key because you pass it in via command line go and fetch the payload, they've got the payload that's encrypted and the key and decrypt it, right, so they can see what you did. If we build a payload server for this, um, you can make these one time. So you can say, like, once this this key or this host or whatever else you, you tie it to has fetched this payload, never send it again, then you could then send something else in its place, like a legitimate looking update or a rickroll or whatever else you, you feel like sending over. Um, so it would be a really good way of sort of making this a little bit more resistant to determined reverse engineering. Um, yeah, I want to test this on more AV. Um, Carbon Black and CrowdStrike being the two I really want to get this tested on. Um, Carbon Black do not offer a trial. CrowdStrike do, and despite, I think I'm on four attempts to get a trial, have rejected me at every time. Um, if any of you guys can help set that up, that would be awesome. Um, come see me and talk to me about running this on, on, these, on like other next-gen AV. And there is the potential to use other languages for this, so I'm fairly sure C Sharp is not alone in this ability to build itself in memory. Um, I'm assuming Java probably has this capability, and other languages probably do as well. But in theory, we could apply this concept to any programming language that supports this. Um, yeah, so I, I have to put this in. How do we fix it? Um, this is a post-exploitation tool, so avoid the initial compromise, right? That that makes this really easy. Um, but there will always be AV passes, AV bypasses. So I'm not dropping Lee O'Day against like next gen AV. It, it's just another bypass. Um, there are ways to sort of mitigate this. So alert on new binaries being added to the system. Like you don't expect a 10 meg binary that's unsigned to be dropped onto one of your workstations and executed, like trigger an alert on it. Um, monitor network traffic, this fetches a payload, it may be encrypted and it may be over HTTPS, but it's still suspicious network traffic. And yeah, don't rely on AV, um, sort of, we, we say this all the time, like AV is a defense in depth measure, like if you're relying on AV to stop, like, hackers, then you're gonna have a bad time. Um, there are plenty of ways of bypassing AV, this is just a generic way of doing it. So that is it. I've no idea what I've done for time. I've probably rattled through it quite quickly. But if you have any questions, shout out or come find me in the bar. Um, grab me on Twitter. Callum, go. Right, you know me, Nick. <laughs> um, why are you not on the main stage? Would you like to run away with me? Can I buy you with that? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll answer those in reverse order. The bar is free, so thanks, but no, I'm good. Um, no. And so this was built about three weeks ago over rum in a hotel room on site because we needed to get past silence to get some tooling onto some compromised hosts for a red team gig. Um, so the, the call for papers had passed for this. Um, I have submitted it to EMF. I'm yet to hear back. Um, but yeah, there's, this is about all the content I have for now. So I'm not releasing the tooling at this point because it's not ready for public consumption. What I'm releasing is the, the concept behind it. Um, but there, there will be a release of stable tooling for this. Um, probably at the end of August, if this gets accepted to EMF, otherwise it'll be at some point, probably in September. Um, but yeah, and anybody else? I did, I said no to that. <laughs> that was a, a categorical no, but thank you, but no. <laughs> no? Cool, thanks guys.